right, race fans, welcome back. We're going Green Flag Sling of Dirt Media here in, in the shop tonight. We're with Adam Stricker. Adam, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. So, obviously, uh, man, the 68 machines go back as far as I can remember. I mean, when I was a like a little guy, I can always remember the 68 being at the track. Yeah. Um, I think we, we talked about in the Facebook version. Your fir- the first driver you remember was mm-hmm. was Weasel. Mm-hmm. Um, when when did you think, hey, I'm I'm going to be in that car someday? So obviously, you know, racing go karts over the years, I didn't I didn't go to the big car races as much as you know as we went go karting, and I knew you know my grandpa had done it, and right. and obviously that's what he loved, and um, so my go kart racing kind of slowed down a little bit, and uh, I just kind of started hitching a ride to the racetrack and <laughs> jumping and, uh, in the hallway. Yeah, so I started hitching a ride and, and you know, I, I adapted to it pretty quick. Obviously racing is, is racing right, to me. Right. And so uh, you know, I just kinda You had the fundamentals down yeah, the I, you know, I, I knew yeah. I knew I wanted to do it, but I was still in that kid stage, you know what I mean? Right. So I I wanted I still wanted to hang out with my buddies. I still wanted sure. to go, you know, with these places and I didn't know if that was for sure what I wanted to do, but obviously, you know, I enjoyed racing, mm-hmm. and um, so at that age, you know, I, like I said, I, I knew I wanted to do it. I just and didn't know when. We're talking what teens? Early yeah, teens, I mean, we're probably fifteen. You know, probably you know, ten, eleven, okay. twelve years old, right. and, and you know, so I, I didn't really know if that's something that I, I really wanted to do. You know, I'd never never really thought about it a whole mm-hmm. lot and just just going at that age for me going and and you know hanging out with all my that buddies was, at the racetrack yeah. yeah that I was mean, your entertainment yeah, yeah you so i that. you know i enjoyed that right so you race go-karts for how, how many years you guys race go-karts uh i'd say probably i would say at least shoot it's been so long ago i mean <laughs> probably five you know four or five years and so it probably started around six seven yeah, something like that yeah yeah around that age and yeah. i just I I got a hang of it pretty well and um, it's it, fun. Yeah, yeah. So I, I enjoyed doing that and like I said, I just didn't know really what I wanted to do, but yeah, I wanted to continue racing. Gotcha. So growing up racing go karts, did did you play any sports in school? I played football for two years. So and then once I got in high school was when I started, you know, in the modified. So, right. so that I sports was sports was pretty well out the window. Yeah, it's at out the window at that yeah. point, you're right. Um, you went to did you go to C and E? Yes. Yep. Okay. Good deal. I went to I grew up so we didn't grow up too far apart. I lived in we had a Williamsburg address but went to Western Brown. So we yeah. always played C and E and yeah. sports and stuff yeah, as I got a kid. You. So uh, what year did you start the big cars? So uh dad drove in let's see, two thousand thirteen and two thousand twelve. And then, so in 2013 was his last year, and I had drove after the races a few times, and um, you know, obviously I had the, you know, I had the itch then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so after the races at Moeller, I think actually I think Brush Creek was the first time I had ever drove, I believe. Now um, Brush Creek, now that was back when it's still the the big D shaped. No, yeah. Tri-oval. So so what yeah. what it is now is what I had I had raced on. Oh, okay. You know, so after the races, but. Anyway, so I I done that. Um, like I said, Dad was racing in thirteen, um, and then uh, two thousand fourteen was my first. Did you ever race year. at Brush Creek when it was still the the tri oval? No, no, okay, so no, that I was too. I remember being there, but too yeah, I, I, I never I got remember, to race. I actually on that. raced on it then. You know, I remember racing yeah. your dad some. You know, mm-hmm. but I can remember. I never actually raced on it as the small track that is mm-hmm. now. It was always the the big tri oval. Yeah. I mean, you get lost, you know, because it's like I never know what turn you're in. Or what you're yeah. You're constantly in a turn. It's like half the time I didn't even see the flag stand because you're just constantly turning. Yeah. You know? I seen I seen plenty of races there, but I never I yeah. never got to race yeah. on that. Yeah, that place it was a it was a different animal. Yeah. You know, we definitely got some stories there, but I'll save those for for a different different episode. <laughs> So what kind of chassis did you guys have when when you started? Was you guys still the Lightning cars? Yeah, yep. So when I started, um, and even you know when Weasel drove and Dad drove, and and then when I started, yeah. So we was in all the Lightning cars and um, had good success with them. Just obviously over the years, just had had went a different route. Yeah. So I'm definitely gonna have to schedule a, a sit down with Weasel because he's yeah. got he's got a lot of history with with the family and mm-hmm. racing you guys with the grandpa with the late model back yeah. in the gosh what was that mid late eighties yeah yeah okay and then then again back with the modified so mm-hmm. okay um, so you're typically you're you're more of a regional mod guy you're not a I mean 
we talked about molar. It's mm -hmm. nice and close, so you're kind of a somewhat of a regular there. Right. Um, do you ever see a point where, hey, I would like to get a couple of championships under my belt just to say, man, that those look cool, or just to have that in your resume, maybe, or yeah, just it, you're good. You're good with just being a regional guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, so when I first started, you know, that was that was big for me to win to win championships, and yeah. uh, I mean, I still don't. I don't stray away from championships, but this at this time, you know, I I, I want to be as as best as I can be, you know. So, right. um, I, championships I, not necessarily improving yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like you know I talked about in the Facebook video we went to Bedford and yeah. you know it's six hours from the house and the only reason I was going was because I knew the best would be there and right. there was a guy that and I know it's kind of a little bit off topic but there was a guy that used to help us on the race cars names Hap and he always told me he was really good at pool and um so he always told me you know he never would play with anybody that was you know not as good as he was or right. if not better because he would get sloppy so yeah uh back to what i was saying you know i wanted to go to bedford to race with the sure. best for one reason you know ump um, points is sure. is huge you know if you can if you can be top 10 in, in the nation or right. even win you know you're you're really doing something so yeah. i wanted to be in that range you know the cha those championships right there is is something that you know is my goal right like i said the track championships i don't stray away from them but right. if they come the, they come yeah at the same time not something you're seeking right yeah that i mean i don't i didn't set out last year to win any track championships whatsoever right. so i wanted you know is to win as many as i could as far as races wise right and then um you know the the national point title would be obviously amazing yeah but so that, that's something that's on the horizon something that is, is a goal and a national yeah. UMP title yeah so that would ideally be you know my my um my goal or you yeah. know my dream or whatever but and if one of the other championships come with it so be yeah, it yeah so right. obviously you know you got the hell tour that's that's you know races 30 something races and it's tough that's something that you would have to commit to to be able to oh, do yeah. national points and you know at this time i i, I can't do that you right. know so right so uh, around, around here locally you're florence a lot mm -hmm. and uh atomic molar yeah um you just said you traveled to bedford and then we knew Terre Haute. Mm -hmm. where el where else have you been to uh we went to brownstown this year uh normally we try to kick off the year at, at 411 in seymour tennessee but okay. um this year they're not they're not running the mods yeah. so uh so we start off there at mitch mccarter's racetrack and um you know we went to like i said brownstown and, and you said atomic and um just just anywhere that kind of makes sense i mean i don't go Portsmouth. i don't go crazy not too yeah. far away. so i don't go i don't go too crazy and um, I just try to stay somewhat close to home, but yeah. you know, a lot of these, I'm I'm within, I'm within a handful of racetracks oh, yeah. before two hours. You know what you, I mean? You know, so that's that's the the nice thing about our our area where we live at, man. And for one, you got downtown Cincinnati, and you've got three racetracks within a 40 minute drive of downtown. Yeah. That's awesome. But I mean, really, if you start opening up and looking at the map, two hours. I mean, man, there's probably a, a dozen tracks. Yeah, right. Or, real close to it, you yeah. know. Um, and that's that's good for options, you know. Um, do you ever, I don't know, do you you, you enjoy watching the, the speed weeks, the winter nationals? And yeah, stuff in Florida? yeah, yeah. So you know, watching that last night, and, yeah, yeah. and uh, just I think, truthfully, more than anything, you, you see the warmer weather, you see the people wearing yeah, you know, t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, you want to get away from the cold. I work outside every day, so yeah. you know, when I sit down at home so, at night. So is, it, is there a desire to want to go down there and get some racing in here? Yeah, in for a couple sure. Of years I mean, or something? You know, like I was just talking to, to my girlfriend last night about it. I, I would I would really love to go to Volusia, yeah. you know, to race. They they start in February, mm -hmm. um, and that's run this year's from February 7th to the 12th. So, right. yeah, I would love to be there, but, uh, <laughs> you know, circumstances have to be yeah. you know, done, be right. done. Yeah, it's got to be right. Sure. So. I've, done, uh, I've done the trip a few times with the Lucas Oil late models, and you can – when you're at East Bay, you can you can look around and tell who's locals and who's the out of town guys. You know the yeah. out of town guys. I mean, we're there in t-shirts and shorts, mm -hmm. and it's 60, 70 degrees, and we're like, man, this feels great because yeah. back home it's 20 or, or less. And the locals down there, they're in hoodies and full on coats, and they're freezing. <laughs> it's like, just it's. I guess they get used to it. You know, they get yeah. used to it really warm. So, um, yeah, I watched watched a little bit of the stuff last night too. I was. 
fighting with uploads and YouTube yeah. at the time too. So I was trying to not focus on that, but trying to get stuff done. Yeah, they, so like a lot of our local guys around here, you know, they, they went and yeah. um, and they're doing really well. You yeah. Know? So uh, it's good to see that. And obviously, like I said, you know, I, I'd love to go down, but um, basically, the, you know, the biggest thing I I why I keep doing this and want to keep doing this is to make you know my grandpa enjoys it just as much as i do sure. and and so it's it's important to him this is what we do on the weekend so right. if he's good with going we'll go if he's not we'll, we'll stay home so yeah you know, i mean i'm not i'm not uh, i'm not going to push him to do something that he don't want to do right. or he doesn't think's you know a good idea so yeah yeah he's he's got a lot of good ideas i mean the guy's been around and he's he's done it a long time you know yeah. so it's it would be i could see definitely it would be hard to go against anything that yeah for sure he says is not a good idea yeah <laughs> so you guys have changed colors up that's a big change yeah what what, what the what the grandpa say about the color change so um you know i always had the orange cars yeah. ever since i started with with elite race cars mm -hmm. and um so we had we had the black the black car last year yeah. and i really liked it but uh when i first told him i was going to to black last year he he didn't really give me much of an answer, but yeah. I kind of also threw it out. I'm like, hey, we're going to have a black race car. and um, So he it's not that he didn't like it, but it was just something that I don't think he could adapt to really Maybe well. Maybe out of his and, comfort zone a little bit. Yeah, yeah. so back when um, they had they had a master-built car, they had a, you know, I think the last, we had one other modified that was blue, but the master-built car they had, um, it was blue. And oh, okay. I had mentioned something to him about going to blue and, yeah. He uh, he was kind of all for that, so yeah. I was like, you know, I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll uh, take it while I can. And I don't know if 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 you can remember or not. So Nick Hoffman's PRI car two mm -hmm. years ago was it was black and blue, just yeah. identical to this yeah, one. Yeah, well, yeah. that car was my car. Oh, okay. So he had asked to use my car for PRI, and it had the black decking in it. So when I got there to build it after PRI, it had this body on it. Well, I fell in love with it. Yeah. So obviously his colors were blue, and with him changing his colors up this year, I thought, well, you know, now, now's, my, now's my time. Yeah. I can I can steal the colors for a little while and, yeah. and uh, see how I, how I, how it turns out. Good deal. So what's uh what's on your plans for this year? What do you what do you got in mind? Uh, nothing probably extremely different than than last year. Um, yeah. I know we like I said in the Facebook podcast interview there. So we raced quite a bit of races uh, this year, probably more than ever. Um, and as far as traveling wise as well, so I'm going to go back to Bedford for that race, and yeah. um, I would like to do a Farmer City and Fairbury Swing, and um, just just different different areas, you know, to go to race. Obviously, I've I've never raced in Illinois, so something like that would be, you right. know, ideally for me. And um, I'd like to fit, hit a few of the summer national shows, and right. just just whatever kind of makes sense. Like I said, you know, I don't want I'm not going to travel four hours for 1500 bucks you know yeah. what i mean so yeah, yeah. Uh, you gotta do you gotta do what's yeah makes sense because sure. i mean everywhere around here your, your local racetracks pays a thousand mm -hmm. um you might catch a 1200 or 1500 even around home so i'm not gonna leave you know them them handful of racetracks right. just to go four hours to, you so know, you'll probably be back at eldora yeah. a time or two maybe maybe in lawrenceburg for a sure. time or two for the yeah. merle downey mm -hmm. stuff okay um now let's let's jump off topic sec out of outside of racing let's let's just go somewhere if if there was no racing you wasn't racing what could you see yourself doing what kind of hobby what would you be doing if you weren't <laughs> driving a race car has if, if i didn't have probably if i didn't have racing as a as an option um at all i i uh i enjoy hunting a lot so yeah. um hunting and fishing so i'd either probably be in a deer stand out of deer state stand, or, yeah. or i'd be uh <laughs> On a lake fishing somewhere, yeah. so I didn't know if you were a, a boating kind of guy or uh, is it a no? Nah, that ain't me. I, no, I, no jet skis. Yeah, I don't. Like I don't those. think I'd. I'd probably even own a boat. My grandpa always told me boats uh, always stand for break out another thousand. Break so out another thousand, yeah, yeah, I don't think I'd. I don't think I'd buy a boat, but for sure, I mean, as far as like fishing, you know, and, and hunting and being outdoors, and yeah, just just you know, a peaceful being somewhere peaceful you right, know is, right. is obviously something that i want to do or think helps you get your mind off things or yeah as, as you were saying that my mind was going through it's like oh man i, I remember me and, me and one of my one of me and one of my grandpas we used to go trapping a lot you mm -hmm. know and both of my grandpas were from down in southeastern kentucky so you get down in the hills down there and you know you're trapping wild bobcats and just all kinds of stuff yeah. it's like Wow, those those were good days, you know. We were just in the in the woods walking. I mean, those were big hills. I mean, not yeah. like the hills we have around here. Yeah. It's like wow. 
So, okay, hunting and fishing. That's a little different. What kind of music you listen to? I'm an uh, I'm an old school country, you know, kind yeah. of listener. I, Bailey always makes fun of me all the time because you know she's <laughs> from the West Side, so she listens more of that hip hop kind of music. And she's more of a Q one I too. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I'm the more of the the old school, you yeah. know, country. Right. And, uh, the Keith Whitley and stuff yeah. like that. So Some me and my George Street. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so me and my dad was putting in floors in my house uh, a couple of weeks ago and. I heard a, a lot of a lot of songs coming on. He's like, "Man, I ain't heard this song uh, forever." Yeah. So it can, made me feel kind of old. There's a station right now. I, I'm I'm been scanning through and 105.9. Is it? It might be. It might be. There, it's uh, they're playing like the '90s country stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh man, yeah, I remember this was good. This was good. Yeah. Country so that music, that but, you know. uh, if I could take the knob off my car, I would because that station doesn't <laughs> doesn't leave. It don't leave. Yeah. Yeah. She she don't care for that too much, does she? No. No. Gotcha. Um, any movies? Any Mar- you Marvel's guy or anything like that? Or no, TV? no. So I don't, I don't really, truthfully, I don't watch a whole lot of TV or even yeah. any movies. So, uh, got a big subscription to Flow Sports and, and Dirt <laughs> right. Vision and Dirt on Dirt. So you can, uh, I'm always, you know, Flow's got that Flow 24 seven. So yeah, yeah. half the time it's on or I'm you know, watching I something. Could, I could probably live in a house with one TV. Yeah. You know, my, you wouldn't walk in my house now and think so because there's probably what three or four 55 inch tvs throughout my house plus there's probably one or two in the basement one in my garage it's like really do we need all these tvs yeah i'm i mean i guess i get guilty on like a snowy day i'm not doing anything i'll find something to Mm -hmm. watch but it's like yeah i could just listen to music and tinker on something work on something or i feel like i've i should be doing something it's like when i was younger i used to fish i used Mm -hmm. to love to fish but then it got to the point where it's like man i'm i'm fishing I'm not doing something. I feel like, man, I've always got something to do. Yeah. And so my wife r- reminded me a couple weeks ago when, hey, we're, we're, we're doing a podcast. We're going to start a podcast. She's like, oh, okay. And she says, you know when spring comes, you know you're going to have four jobs, right? Like, hey, I guess I really didn't think that through all the way. But, yeah, so here, here we are. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, th- I feel like this is something that's needed in our area. I mean, there's a lot of local racers. For and, sure. You know, nobody's really spotlighting nobody's coming and say hey adam let's let's mm-hmm. sit next to your race car and let's talk about racing yeah. or life in general you know mm-hmm. and uh so i think it's gonna go good i mean there's a lot of different people i want to talk to and get different stories you know where they've been where they mm-hmm. where they're going where you want to go you right. know so yeah i think i think you're you're definitely on to something that could be you know pretty big there's like you said there's plenty of people in potential. Area, yeah sure uh, that, that have great stories that you know a lot of people have never really heard i mean the older stories, the older people, they, you know, a lot of them don't have Facebook, so they're not going to get on right. there and, and tell their stories and share them, you know, old memories. So, yeah. you know, like what you're doing, you have to go out and, and find them mm-hmm. and, and, you know, pull it out of them to yeah. be able to, to find out, you know, the and, true you know, and, and there's definitely going to be those guys you're, you're going to run into. It's like, man, people, some people are just quiet, not real talkative. And it, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to yeah. get some stories out of. For sure. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, man, it's we're, we're still talking about racing. And, mm. man, I could probably talk about that all right. day long. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, like I said, I mean, you're you're doing something that's uh, – that a lot of – you know, a lot of people will appreciate, you know. Yeah. So, I know I will. Obviously, you know, I've listened to plenty of podcasts over the time and um, been fortunate enough to be on a few and, and to be able to share, you know – the stories I have, my grandpa and my dad, and, you know, I, I could, uh, I could go on for days, and and I enjoy, you know, telling them, and um, just obviously hearing them as well. Yeah, so I work for Jesse Lay, and sometimes his, uh, his son Austin comes Mm -hmm. in, and he works, and me and him be in the, in the warehouse, and those are good days, because Mm I know, me and and Austin, we just, we seem like we can talk all day, and not hit the same subject twice, but yeah, we're still talking about racing. My, uh, one of my dad's buddies nicknamed him Rapping Ron. My dad's name was Ron, so his, his one of his buddies called him Rapping Ron because mm-hmm. dad could just sit and talk and talk and talk. And he said, "Man, he says you're like your dad. He said you got the gift of gab. You could just sit and talk to strangers." And you know, when I was telling my wife, it's like, "Hey, let's let's do a podcast. I want to do a podcast." She's like, "Well, you know, you, you've got an opportunity. There's you've got something that you're passionate about, and people want to hear stories about, and you know a little bit about mm-hmm. racing." I'm like, "Yeah, a little." So she's like, you know, you, you can do that. She's like, I don't have that option. You know, she's like, I work in mortgage industry. You know, <laughs> nobody wants to hear me sit and talk about, I can give you a better loan. Like, no, yeah. nobody wants to hear that. So. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, they're, you know, Jody, Shannon, they've, they've done mm-hmm. some different stuff. And um, Dustin Roll over Dirt 2 Media, they do stuff in Indiana. So, yeah. you know, you're around this area where you can get, 
you know, a bunch of different interviews from people from, mm -hmm. you know, in the Kentucky area were, you know, around there and obviously, you know, here. Yeah, we, we were we were talking like, man, how you know, obviously we've got the three closest tracks, the the, the Florence, Moeller, Lawrenceburg, you know, but, you know, really Brush Creek's not that far away, you mm -hmm. know, tack on maybe another 45 minutes, you're in the Portsmouth area or Atomic area. So, I mean, that's not really out of the scope i guess too yeah. much and we were talking about like well how far can we go it's like well you know basically if we could go like in a day's drive and be back like man if you consider a day's drive and we <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of racetracks yeah. within a day's drive I mean, next thing you know we're going to be down lake cumberland talking yeah. to brandon hardgrove mm -hmm. and you know i mean which that's subject that come up you know tires and you mm -hmm. know stuff with him and uh i mean yeah there's there's just all kinds of the scope can be really big yeah i mean there's there's I, I don't think you could ever really run out of topics as far as the racing goes. I mean, it, you could go on for days and, I mean, forever. And, yeah. and finally, you know, it, like I said, even after days, you're still not going to run out of topics <laughs> right. to talk about. By the end of the day, there's going to be a new topic yeah, come up. for right, sure. Right. So, um, tires. So, since tires was mentioned, you know, uh, are you guys having any hard time getting tires? What's, yeah. what's your tire yeah. situation so, looking like? Yeah. Uh, I, I bought, you know, I had, I was fortunate enough to buy some tires there at the end of the year, and yeah, you know, if if racing, if I started tomorrow racing, You're good. I got three tires You're in my ready name. To go. I got three tires in my name. Oh, three. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I mean, no, it's yeah, it's a bad shortage. I mean, yeah. Um, I think they're finally getting it under control. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say control, but I think it's getting better. Better. Okay. Um. So, uh, you know, a lot of people. You see some people that, that don't struggle to get tires, and you see people that do struggle to get tires. So uh, you're, you're going to have that. At, that's with anything. Yeah. So, um, but, I mean, yeah, like, like I said, if I was to start tomorrow, I've got three tires. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, all the, all the tires I ended up having last year, that, you know, they were, they were in good shape. But, right. you know, you've got to make do with what you, what you have at this point. So hey, have you ran any of the American racers? On the mod tires, I have. Um, you know, going to 411, like like I was talking about earlier. You know, we go down there in February for their Valentine's Day race, and I went down there for their Area 51 uh, race they had there, and um, was on the American stuff. Uh, and you know, I had good success with them. And and um, could, but obviously, could you tell much difference, or was the, was the car did it seem any better with or without, or? As Do you really as, have a preference one no, way or the other? No, I, I truly don't. I truly don't have a preference as far as, you know, that goes. Um, I'm not on no tire deal. I, I pay I pay for tires just yeah. as, as much like as, you else. know, Joe Blow down the street does. Right. You know, so uh, as far as, you know, I could sit here and try to and throw you a sales pitch and say, hey, yeah, you know, this tire is, yeah. is, is way better than this one. And, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm not on no tire yeah. deal. and. And if I, I, I have no reason not to tell you the truth. And so, yeah. uh, you know, if I, if I, uh, if I had to choose tomorrow, you know, I'd whatever's I'd, available. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it'd probably be the Hoosier stuff because yeah. you know we're racing around here. Sure. But yeah, so I yeah. mean, I don't have much of a preference. Yeah, I know, like our three tracks here, they're they're all Hoosier tracks. But I just don't know if, if we're going to see any changes in that. You know, as if if the tire shortages get worse or get better you know could influence whether tracks open it up or or not you know and just i was curious to see what to what you yeah, thought about them I, I i truly don't think in my opinion i don't think opening the tire deal up would be a good idea because like i said you know some guys they don't have problems getting tires and right. the other guys they do and so that goes for both sides you know the american side and the hoosier side some there's some people that run Americans that can get tires and have, don't, don't right. have no problem. You yeah, know, so. I didn't, so I didn't know, like, I know it's kind of a, I'm not going to say real controversial, but, I mean, a lot of the late model guys are mm -hmm. looking at different avenues. You know, you've got, a like, a local regional series. They, they're they allowing the American racers. So you got guys that are have been maybe a local racer, but now if they're going to start running that series, well, now they got to start buying American racers as well, you know, just to, ha to have both. So yeah. I didn't know if modifieds were looking at the same type of situation anywhere or you guys are pretty well locked into the Hoosiers around mm -hmm. here yeah so I mean there's there you could probably go on for days trying to you know trying to figure out a solution but at the yeah. end of the day I don't I don't think that you'll ever I don't think you'll find a solution you know kind of at this point um right. I mean there's not to name no names but there's you know there's yeah. people out there that think they can recreate things and right 
and you know go above and beyond and, and just make something happen out of out of this, you know the blue. So right. Um, but I mean, like I said, you're going to have that shortage, and it's it's I I believe it's slowly getting better, but uh, well, yeah, I hope. mean there's there's still <laughs> a struggle around here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, I was thinking there was something else. Oh, is there a is there a favorite track? Yeah. So I got asked that once before, and I I truly I I picked it. Um, Dustin Roller asked me the same thing one time on Dirt Two Media, and. Uh, I told him Brownstown and, and his home tracks Brownstown. Oh, so yeah. the only reason I picked Brownstown is it's so technical there. You don't have you have no walls. Right. You know you got to be. It's like driving on a you know on a stream. You got to be yeah. consistent. You can't make no mistakes. You make a mistake, you're going over the bank, and you know. You, you now I don't know is with if it's a daylight or a dark. Is it, is it easier to see and maybe hit your marks there or the track or is it you know depending on the track conditions oh yeah or for sure as far as daylight goes i mean it's yeah, a lot like, easier to tell yeah, what you're, you're doing you're coming out of four and you're looking at the at the announcer's yeah. booth straight ahead you know yeah. so at nighttime i mean it's 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 just pitch black yeah. and you're driving down driving down the front stretch there and you can't see nothing i knew years ago and i i don't i guess it's maybe still be the same way uh mudlick when mm -hmm. So I used to help Gary Engel years and years and years ago. And we went to Mudlick, and Gary would always – he'd come in there. It's like they, they won't start racing until the sun goes down because when you're going down the front stretch, that's right where the sun's setting. So you are you can't see where you're at going into the corner because you're blinded by the sun. And it's yeah. like you got to wait till the sun goes down before you can even see. You know? Yeah. I, I, I can imagine how bad that would be. Yeah. I just Well, it's funny you say that because like, like at Mudlick, you know, the late model stuff there was – was unreal and like so they would you know they were going twice as fast as the modifieds yeah. and i remember i was always a huge fan of, of, of bill williams you know when mm -hmm. he ran his late model there yeah. he always used to talk about the sun real bad and yeah um but like i said you know they're going twice as fast yeah. as the mods so i can only imagine you know i remember the, bill billy and Vern used to have some battles there yeah. and they put on put on some good shows so i remember as far as i can remember back to mudlick days i remember me and my grandpa were sitting in the stands on the back stretch, and Bill Williams and Butch Dowdy was was battling it out, and <laughs> and I don't I, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure Butch Dowdy put him over the hill, <laughs> and uh, so my grandpa went to the bathroom and he come back and he's like, uh, where'd Butch go? Or I'm sorry, where'd Bill go? And I said, he's over there in the woods, and uh, <laughs> he went so, hunting. <laughs> yeah, so he ended up barreling across the back stretch there and was end up in the woods, but uh, that's as far back as I can remember yeah. there. Yeah, these uh, now that place is shut down for a while. Now it's mm -hmm. reopened. Was it last year they reopened, or was it the year before? I believe it was the year before. The year before, okay. Yeah, so we'll have to. That's uh, that's again another one of those trucks mm -hmm. that's not that far away. We, yeah. could, we could end up talking to some drivers from mm -hmm. down the Mudlick area. You know, it's uh, what just uh, east uh, Maysville a little mm -hmm. bit there. Yeah. So, you know, that was that was a lot. And again, now I grew up there just as much as you know. Brush Creek or places like that, you know, my dad had really good success there, and and you know, I as far as that goes, I don't remember anyone else at Mudlick other than my dad, you mm, know. Okay. So that was yeah, uh, you know, a good time there. And sure. like I said, I grew up. It's always fun when you're winning. Yeah, I grew up majority of the, majority of the Saturday nights was there. I remember, and you know, I I uh, there was a guy that helped us. His name was Elwood, and I remember we was on the way home one night and. I forget where we were coming across, but there was a tornado coming, and it was on the radio, and he was an old soul, you know, he didn't really yeah. say a whole lot, and uh, he was kind of, he was really just dry, like, he, you know, he didn't yeah. have much of a sense of humor, but anyway, so, I was petrified, you know, I was scared, I was like, <laughs> you know, we, yeah, we got a tornado coming, and I don't like storms, so I asked him, I was like, uh, I was like, what do you think about tornadoes? He said, I don't, and that, don't. that was the only answer I got, yeah. so... Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I spent a lot of time there at, <clears throat> at Mudlick and and just as you know as well as anybody else. But yeah. uh, my uh, one of my one of my grandpas, he was man, he was petrified of storms. He uh, he had said he was out he was hunting one night and he they did a lot of coon hunting down mm -hmm. there, and uh, he was running across the field and there was a storm coming and a tornado and they could hear it coming, so he was running along this fence line to get into the woods. 
and to beat the tornado in. So he got it in the woods, hunkered down, I don't know, tied a belt around a tree or what, <laughs> what he did. So the storm passed, and when he came out, that fence line that he ran across, he said it was gone. <laughs> all the, the fence, all the posts, everything was just completely gone. So I remember for years, every time if it was a mamaw and papaws, if it started storming, man, Papa, he you wouldn't see he disappeared. He get, he went in back back room and just hide out. Yeah. It's like, man, it's just a storm, man. It's going to pass, you know. Yeah. I mean? But I was a kid, you know. Still, you know, I, storms really don't bother me. And my aunt, one of my aunts, she's like that too. She's all petrified, and I'm like, why are you so scared? She's like, well, it's a storm. I'm like, yeah, it's, it'll pass, you know. <laughs> I'm like, it, it, yeah. just, it, it don't bother me, so. I, I enjoy it. Watch them sometimes. Sit out on a porch and just let it rain, man. I, yeah, I'm good. I'm good with the the rain and the thunderstorms, but uh, the, the tornadoes yeah, is not yeah, a, is no good it's, for me. Yeah, they're no joke, and they're you know we I should, shouldn't. I don't make light of them or anything. They're definitely serious, but it just you know it's one of those things where it's. I, I've always kind of thought, and I put this told, put it to my aunt like this. I said, look, it's it's God's will. It's going to happen or yeah. it ain't. You know, and yeah. I'm just going to enjoy it while I'm here. You know. Yeah. So, She's like, well, I never thought of it that way. I'm like, well, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're going to Chevron Blue this year. Mm -hmm. So, you when when's it getting wrapped? Uh, I would say so. Um, Dylan Brady with Night Out Designs is um, designed me up something, and okay. uh, he's, he does a wonderful job. And um, Matt uh, Matt's graphics and wraps they, they do mm -hmm. all my printing and, and as far as putting on the car as well, and um, they do a flawless job. And they do shirts. So, they do. Yep. And I may yep. need yep. to talk to Mr. Watson about some shirts. Yep. <laughs> yep. So he actually, uh, he just did a bunch of ASR hoodies okay. for me. And, but, uh, yeah, so he has a surgery, I believe, on February 5th. So okay. I know he said he's going to be out for a couple weeks. So probably into February. Um, I don't, I guess, like I was telling you before, you know, 411, they're not going to run mods this year as far as February. So right. I probably won't get started till March. Um, so I'm in, you know, no extreme rush. Gotcha. Well, when you're ready. We'd be we'd be happy to get some pictures yeah. and uh, put this un unveil this new thing this yeah. new hot rod yeah for sure you get yeah we'll uh, obviously when we get the old uh, when it gets wrapped and get your logo on there and we'll, uh, we'll definitely uh, you know we'll reveal it absolutely I like it so Adam you got any any people you need to think anything special for this year you need we need to go over or touch base on or other than dad and grandpa anybody anybody else you need to think. Yeah, I mean, no, not really. I, obviously, you know, like you said, my, my, my family and, you know, my grandpa, is, like I said before, you know, this is a, the biggest reason, you know, we do this. And yeah. if it wasn't for, you know, my grandma as well, you know, she, she lets us do it. And, um, you know, obviously they're, they're, uh, they're big. And, and if it wasn't, if, if it wasn't for them, I couldn't do it. My mom, and, you know, my dad. And, um, but uh, I'll, I'll continue to do this as long as my grandpa lets me. And, right. You know, I told him. I told him from the get-go. You know, if he ever gets to the point where he's not having fun, I, you know, I want to know. I, I want to. I would go and race for the next month and a half. You know, two months or you know whatever if I could. And yeah. And if he wanted to, you know, what I mean, like I said, I, I, um, this is strictly for him. You know, what I mean, so yeah. it, it, as long as he's having fun and and um, he's happy. You know, we'll we'll, we'll keep right. going and and. So one of the one of the common things I've seen here, same thing when you know when I sit down, we were talking with Jesse is, you know, it's really family based, family oriented, you know, mm -hmm. and it really keeps the family it's something you guys do together. You know, it's time well spent with the keeping yeah. the family together, and man, that's that's good stuff. Anytime that you can take a, such an expensive hobby like this, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's to the core of the family and yeah. everybody loves doing it and as long as you're having fun with it you know that's that's awesome stuff yeah so you know i get i get asked probably at least 20 times a year you know when i'm going to move up to late models and all that kind of stuff and you know i i drove i had the uh opportunity to drive john whitney's mm -hmm. car and um i drove up uh one night for mike hunger and um you know i really i really like the late model stuff and it's it's neat but you know the day my grandpa ever says something like, hey, you know, I want to run late miles, that's when we'll do it. That's you when know, you So yeah. I'm not in no rush. I don't, you know, they're cool. I like them. And, right. and you know, they're fun, I'm sure. I, would, I know they're fun. I drove <laughs> them. But as far as, you know, cost-wise, it's just, it's they're out of hand. And, I mean, everything's out yeah, of hand. Yeah, you know, yeah. so I'm not sitting here pointing at the late mile guys yeah, saying, yeah. you know, you, you got all the nuts. money in the world. Yeah. and <laughs> But it's just, like, you know, it, it goes straight back to what I was saying before. This is what you know he liked. This sure. is what he switched to when my dad was driving, and yeah. um, 
he enjoys them. I mean, yeah. they're they're a lot more technical. Um, as far as I'm saying, back in the day, you know, the late right. models is way different than than the modifieds. You got your st stack springs and all that kind of stuff. But you know, he this is what he likes, and I'm I'm good with that. You know, yeah. I'm fortunate enough to be able to sit in a seat and and obviously you know work side by side with him and. Um, we've had we've had great partners over the years, you know, yeah. since I've started. Some and good help. Too, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, um, my buddy Craig Naylor with with Naylor Concrete, he he's my right hand man. Yeah. I mean, he he's he he wants to win, if you know, the same as much as I do, or if not more. You right. know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, like like you know, you were saying thanking people. I just I just uh, I can't stress enough, you know, how how blessed I truly am. You know, my, my grandparents have, he, you know, he works every day at this, this bay next, next to us right yeah. here. You know, he works every single day, and my grandma still works every day. And No you signs know, of slowing down. No, you know, <laughs> so this is, and every, every night, you know, normally we're out here till 7, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever. You yeah. know, whatever, whatever we got to do to be able to race Friday and Saturday, it gets done. Right. You know, I work, I work a Monday to a Thursday job, you know, I, 10 hours a day, four days a week, you know, now so. You, you were saying you work outside. What, yeah. what are you doing now? So I, I work for a company called Brucon Incorporated. We're a natural gas contractor for Duke Energy. Okay. So we do all their um, natural gas mains, mm -hmm. um, natural gas services to, to residential homes yeah. and stuff like that. So They just came through our neighborhood where I live and just, mm -hmm. she was changing everybody's lines out and yeah. putting new services in. I'm like, yep. so, uh, okay. So that's something... Um, you know, I used to work at our junkyard and everything, and, mm -hmm. and um, I just wanted to do something different. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I, I got on to doing gas, and, you know, the guys I work with, was, they're great people, and the company I work for, they, you know, they, they're easy to go along with as far as my racing, and they support it just as, you know, as, as well as anybody. So That's awesome. It, it uh, definitely helps, obviously, if, you know, if it wasn't for, you know, my company let me um, take off when need be or, or right. if I can, you know, when... when um, they allow me to, so. Yeah. But like I said before, yeah, you know. I've got a pre I've got a pretty good boss too, and it's like, hey, I need a Jesse. I gotta go to the race this weekend, or <laughs> yeah. I gotta leave early to go to work today, or yeah. whatever. And he's like, yeah, okay. Yep. Shoot so, me a text, send me an update, or something. Yeah. You know, obviously, you know, my home home life is more important. My bills are more important than oh, this thing. Yeah. But you know, they priorities. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, they they've they've uh, they've treated me well, and you know, I've I I was raised you know i think the the best i i could be and yeah um you know i was taught right from wrong and i was sure. taught you know work first and play second you right know what i mean so uh it just uh i i like i said i i i uh i'm very thankful for everything you know i've ever been taught and as far as you know taught right from wrong and and you know where i'm at in life i'm i'm happy you know so i'm i'm uh excited for this year and uh can't, wait, to for, see what's can't come. wait for weather to break so we can yeah. we can get to racing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, good stuff. Well, big thanks to mom and dad for raising you right. That's yeah, yeah. that's important, you know. So, but good uh, deal. yeah, I um, you know obviously we're sitting next to you know our new car here and Nick Hoffman with Leach Hassies. He's been over backwards for me. Yeah. You know I was there a month ago and Mason Beatles and all his guys there as welders and Brant you know Brandon and Allman they they pitched in and helped us get this car done. I think we got it done and. Uh, it was three days, you know, so we built it really quick. It's, I, I got there, I got there on a Thursday, and I left on Sunday with it to right. bring it home. So, well, I, t I tell you what, I don't, I know the, I know the camera can pick up a pretty good bit of it, but man, yeah. it just, I'm sure it doesn't do it justice. I mean, yeah. just the, the sitting here looking at it and was, was walking around and looking at it, we were coming in and getting set up. Man, this thing is just, it's, a, it's. Man, you you almost think, man, do you, you want to race it or do you want to show it? I yeah. Mean, I mean, people don't understand how good looking these cars are at times. You know, be, before they start getting, before they hit the track, mm -hmm. man, they're show pieces. Yeah. You know? So, I really wanted, I really wanted to get, you know, the car done before PRI and put it in PRI or put it in cavalcade, and you know, that's yeah. just something I've never done. I've never been able to do yeah. that. I I just, I never. For one, never had the time, and you know I'm no fabricator by no means. You right. know, so these, you know, Nick, they build, he builds top-notch race cars and mm -hmm. does a wonderful job as far as his craftsmanship and and you know fabricating things. So, right. you know, he builds a showpiece race car. So yeah. I was, you know, I would like to put it in the show. I just sure. never got around to yeah. it, and 
It's, um, it's tough to do too. It's yeah. like right in the mm-hmm. right in the middle of the off season, yeah, and for a sure. lot of people are still working on stuff. And man, you got to you got to start early to get a piece ready for that. You know? Yeah. So, I uh, but like I said, you know, Nick he he's been good to me, and then um, his dad Daryl Hoffman does all my motors, and you know he's okay. he's he saved me a bunch. You nice. know, I mean he's he's. Uh, you know, one of the greatest guys I could ever ask for, and um, Rich Poe from Babylon, he supplies with all of our oil, and yeah. you know, he's he's taking great care of me. Um, BNB Auto Care, Bailey's dad, Brad Wick, he's he is he stuck his neck out for me pretty big this year, you know. Oh, so, yeah. um, and then uh, Matt Basham with Stainless Craft, his wife Amy, mm-hmm. um, True Form Race Products, Justin Chance, he supplies me with all my wheel covers and um, Weirs Machine Racing Products, Swift Springs, I just. Like I said before, I mean we we've been really blessed with with good help, mm-hmm. um, good partners, and and good you know product sponsors. So right. uh, I stated on my Facebook post you know into last year that we had zero parts failures huh. all year long. You know what that's, I mean? So that that's, that's nice. a first. Um, yeah. And uh, but that comes with you know great help and mm-hmm. as far as you know great people. So surrounding yourself with the best of the best. For sure. Yep. Yep. Good deal. Well, Adam, I think we're going to go ahead and throw the checkered flag on Slinging Dirt tonight. We definitely appreciate you being here, man. I think we've got a lot of good topics we've yeah. talked about. We've been a little bit all over the board here, if yeah. I don't knock the microphone over yeah. here. But, uh, yeah, we've definitely talked about a lot of different things, and I think it's been good stuff. I think the I think the people like it. I hope they like it anyway. That's, yeah. that's why we're here, you know, so good deal. Uh, hope for a lot of success this year, and pro- hopefully we'll probably see you in the victory lane a time or yeah. two this year. Hopefully. So. Good deal. All right, folks. Well, if you've got anything you want to see in the next episodes coming up, don't forget to hit us a message or uh, check us out. Like us on YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Check out Adam's Facebook page. Do you have a Facebook page, fan page, or anything for your? Yeah. Name? So it, on Facebook, it's un, it's under Adam's Trucker Racing, and then Adam's um, Racing. you know, and then obviously my personal Facebook. Gotcha. All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to check us out, and we'll see you next time.